I wanted to respond to the feedback I'm getting on this this video in particular. Uh, to put it mildly, I'm getting lambasted by uh, what I would assume are some seasoned investors who are saying, Carrie, you don't know what you're talking about. I've heard the word ignorant used several times and novice investor. <clears throat> Basically, they're disagreeing with the premise that I have that um, this is not equivalent to uh, 2007, 2009. I'm getting a lot of feedback that the debt is overwhelming. Apparently, they didn't see the video I did where I explained how this debt is not a problem as long as interest rates are low and inflation is low. So, But it's the strongest video I've done. So I'm really pleased. My, I want to thank you for those of you who are subscribing. Uh, in the last, um, it, it, it was usual I would get somewhere between 12 and 15 subscribers a day. That's jumped to 70 subscribers a day. We're on our way to a million. And I want to thank you for your support. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I had mentioned that yesterday I was going to be a part of a webinar in which Amy Webb was going to be featured. And those of you who don't know, Amy Webb is the author of the Big Nine, and and this book, in unlike any other several other books, but this book opened my eyes to artificial intelligence and how it was going to change the world and how these nine companies were going to drive the change that we were going to have that would be is equivalent to the change that occurred in the last hundred years in our country is going to happen in the next 10 years. So Amy Webb was a part of that. And what I want to do, I, I copied or I uh, recorded the, the video. And, uh, uh, and it's about a 48-minute conversation between Amy and the host. Um, and that was um, Ryan Duffy. I'm also going to share with you um, how you can be on these next broadcasts. Um, and I'll do that through a letter. I'll, um, if, if you're already a member or have registered at bestofusinvestors.com, um, you will get an email from me within the next 48 hours, and it'll explain uh, where you need to go so that the next time a uh, webinar like this occurs with somebody as important to this, you can be invited well as well. Uh, Ryan led the conversation between Amy and um, uh, Gillis Whiting. Gillis Whiting is uh, involved with SoftBank, and if you're not familiar with SoftBank, they're a major uh, investor in startups, and um, they're uh, out, of, out of Japan. What I found in this video that I think you need to key on is that they're basically saying uh, the, the coronavirus has created a watershed moment for AI and it's going to separate the winners from the losers. And, and in essence, what they all three agreed on was that if, in fact, a corporation is not implementing or recognizing the importance of AI in their future business, they're going to become a loser. They're just going to be on the outside. Whether it's uh, retail, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's airlines, cruise ships, whatever, AI is going to drive the future of their business and they need to have it in. Um, Gillis from SoftBank spent quite a bit of time in talking about the companies they're invested in in robotics that are both for retail and, and medical. And um, so I think you want to pick up on the companies he's talking about. I'm going to do some research about it. Amy referred in the big nine of persuasive uh, surveillance or permissive in surveillance. In essence, saying we as a, as, as a population, as a civilization have to make a decision now if we're going to allow artificial intelligence and in specific surveillance to come in and monitor our lives for the betterment of our health. And this is a decision that more than likely 
we're each going to have to make. And as she's also saying, that uh, the government is going to have to get involved because there are no agencies that are established right now to set this up. Uh, they're, they're talking about delivery vehicles, something they mentioned that I didn't know, that Florida has relaxed their drone laws so that prescription drugs can be delivered to um, some of the retirement communities, particularly the villages in Florida, uh, with the use of drones. And then uh, something else I didn't know, that the heavy involvement that Microsoft has in agro-farming, these are all things that I just wasn't aware of and I want you to be aware of. So if you like this information, if you'd like access to this video, sign up for bestofusinvestors.com and you will automatically get the link. I've done a private video and you can watch this and you can, you can bring your knowledge up. Then going along the same lines of, um, of, of, the, of the lambasting I received for the ignorance of my saying that uh, the market is, not, um, is going to keep going up, um, I wanted to refer those of you in the, in the tribe uh, back to one of the three books that I think are essential for you to read. And that's uh, the future. Uh, the the future's faster than you think. Um, and I want you to go to page um, 144. And there you're going to find a heading: one billion Android teachers per year. And what this goes into, and I'm not going to read it all, but I want you to understand what is happening in in the world you live in. Back in 19 or 2012. Uh, a gentleman did a, a program where he literally bought tablets and put educational software on them and then delivered them to tribes in Ethiopia in a box. Uh, and he didn't give them to the parents, he gave them to the children. And as you read through this, the children got into the boxes without any help from anybody who was literate and within a matter of months, they were reading and writing because of the software that he had let, loaded up on these um, $100 tablets that he put in Ethiopia. Then it goes on to say, in um, May of 2019, um, the, a, a, a program that was sponsored by Google and Tesla uh, did this again in Tanzania and they delivered thousands of these um, uh, tablets to thousands of, of children. So they, they delivered these tablets to these children, and over a matter of five months, the children were reading, writing, and doing math. They had no instruction. They just taught themselves how to, to learn from the software that was loaded on these tablets. Um, and then they, the children learned how to hack the software within the tablet so that they could gain access to the internet as little as they could. The whole driving thing that, and, and that brought tears to my eyes was, this was done in, in conjunction with Google and, and Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, and the whole learning was that if from the in the future, if they load a software on my new cell phone, um, and I have currently in my possession three cell phones, one of which is functional and the other two which are not, what if they had Google, Android had loaded software comparable to the software that they loaded on those tablets they took to Tanzania and Ethiopia. And then when I was done with this cell phone, or these three cell phones, and was ready, ready, ready to trash them, I could save the environment and I could educate children by donating it to a charity. And they used the words, I could donate a teacher to charity that 
And since there are one billion of these manufactured each year, you and I could donate one billion teachers to charity a year by just donating our cell phone that was preloaded with the software that ultimately would end up in the hands of these children. Now, I, I thought about that, and then I thought about the lambasting I was receiving and that I was an idiot, that not, I didn't recognize that these stocks like Google and Tesla and Facebook and, and, and IBM and, 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 and were overvalued, and I believe that those people who threw those words at me have no idea what is coming. They are so keyed to the past economy, the past stock market, that they don't know what's coming. And I feel like I'm sitting at a poker table with nine other people that don't know a damn thing about poker, and I know how to count cards. That's what I feel I am doing right now. My portfolio, it, it, to give you some reflection, my portfolio, I have con a consistency of getting about a 25% annual return on it, which I've been happy with. Well, I'm into it about, about uh, five months this year, and I'm already up 30%. I'm quite confident I'll be up 50%. And why? Because I read. I understand what the hell's going on and where I am and what the society is. And as one of these, one of your, your comments said, what the hell are you doing at 75 years uh, still investing? You only got five to 10 years left. You need to start traveling and enjoying your life. Well, folks, I'm enjoying my life. I'm enjoying my life more than I ever had because every day I'm learning more. I sat down with my wife this morning and said, do you have any idea how much money we're making? Do you have any idea how much we're going to leave to our children and our grandchildren and how I'm going to educate them to be good investors in this world and how to enjoy life and be financial independent and I didn't know this when I was a financial advisor I've learned it within the last two years so to those of you who think I'm a bleeding idiot guess what I know what's happening and if you want to be a part of it subscribe and, and I'll send you this video and you can be a part of, of it. Subscribe at Best of, uh, of Us Investors. And oh yeah, get your coffee cup. Uh, I think you're going to find that this is going to be a big part of your future.